but my friends have heard it many times so <laughs> so this is going back about 15 years and I was wanting to buy the most economical used car on the market which happened to be a Honda Civic station wagon which was kind of a spoiled box living in Portland there was one for sale in Corbett, Oregon. So I drive out there real early on a Saturday morning, get in the car, and I have to get back on the freeway because I want to get some speed to see how this thing's performing. And as we um, heading back towards Portland on the Corbett, you know, on ramp to I-5, no, I-84. I'm nervous, by the way. <laughs> um, and so there's a there's a dead beaver on the side of the road, you know. So we drive down. And I think I we turn around and. Um, Rooster Rock Park and head back and I decided not to buy the car. I forget, can't remember the reason. But I'm back on the ramp again and there's that beaver. I go buy it and, and I'm a guy that likes adventure and kind of does thing off from the spur of the moment. I say, yeah, I'm in Oregon, it's the state animal. I, I gotta have that beaver. <laughs> so, so I turn around to Rooster Rock Park and I, I go back and pull over and I, just, this, I got this beaver, I open the trunk and I put it, it in the trunk and I go, wow. And, and I happen to know, like, I gotta do something, with, I, gotta, I gotta put it in something. And I, I happen to know that in the bathroom, sometimes the garbage can that's in there for the paper towel when you wipe your hands, they put an empty one underneath it. So, they, 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 so I go to the and I hit it. Bingo, there's a one. It's a big one. The beaver said it. So I put the beaver in it. And I go, okay, this is cool. I'm not going to get, you know, it wasn't too, it wasn't bloody at all. But you, know, you never know what's going to come out of a dead beaver. Um, so, okay, so it's Saturday, and I say, oh man. What am I going to do with it until Monday? Because I want to take it on Foster Boulevard. There's a taxidermist there, and I want to take it to see if I can get it um, the, the high tan, I guess is the right word. So I happened at that time uh, to work for a company that had a keg cooler, like two stories tall, 40 degrees. I said, well, I'm going to put it in there over the weekend so it stays cold, right? So uh, there's not much business on Saturday or Sunday. So I go in there and I put the top rack, which is like two stories up, and I put it behind and then put kegs in front of it and just pray nobody's going to stay in the beaver. So what's on Monday? On Monday, I, um, I shoot them out after work, so it's like three in the afternoon on Monday, and I take it out to Foster to the place that does it, and I, I, I don't bring it in, I don't believe, but I tell the guy, I say, hey, I have this beaver, I like a tan, the high tan, and he goes, oh, you, you are a licensed trapper? And I go, what? And he goes, well, yeah, are you licensed? And I go, no, it's roadkill, it's just a dead beaver I found on the side of the road. And he goes, oh, hey, I, I can't touch it. So you've got to take it to the Oregon Fish and Wildlife and have it tagged and bring it back, and then I can have it done for you. I go, are you kidding me? He goes, no. Oh, and so this is, it's too late on Monday, so now I've got to keep it in my trunk until Tuesday afternoon. So I, I go out there somewhere out in Clackamas on this road that you think you're going to get lost and deliverance might happen. So, um, I pull up to the place, I go inside, and I tell this guy my story. And he says, okay. He comes out, he opens the trunk, and he looks at it, and he goes, oh yeah, that's about a, about a four-year-old female, weighs about 45 pounds. Um, where'd you find it? And I said, oh, Corbett, that exit. And he goes, yeah, there's a culvert there that goes under I-84, and everyone, once in a while, gets plugged up, and the beavers try to cross the road and get hit. He says, it may not be a, too good of a hide, because depending on what hit it, the rolls under it can put holes in the, in the hide. Yeah. I go, oh, okay. So we go inside, and he's filling up this paperwork, and I'm sitting there, and he's at his desk, and I'm right there in front of him. And he looks up at me, and he says, um, well, what are you going to do with this thing? What are you going to do with your hide? And I said, well, I'll probably keep it for a, for a couple of years. And I have, in, um, in New York, I have an Aunt Patty, who's a Tuscarorn Indian, Native American. And she's of, of the beaver clan of the Tuscarorans. And he goes, I said, I might give it to her. 
he slams down his pen and he goes, looks up at me and he says, this hide has to stay with you the rest of your life. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, the pelt police will come get you. <laughs> And he's dead serious. You know, and I go, are you kidding me? Like, okay, I'll keep it, you know. <laughs> so I uh, take it to the guy first. Here, here's your paperwork. Now give me a 10 uh, time for me. And uh, which we did. And uh, it took about six months and 120 bucks, and it's on my couch at my house. <laughs> Yay!